hike. Hey there, thanks for joining our hike. I'm Kevin and it is a hot one today. I'm here in Fryman Canyon, Studio City. And uh, man, great views up here. I'm drinking a lot of water today. I always drink a lot of water. They say it's healthy for you. I have like six or seven pints a day, but I'm up all night going to the bathroom like five or six times, back and forth, back and forth. And then I'm exhausted during the day because I didn't get any sleep. I'd probably get a better night's sleep if I started on the toilet and got up to go to my bed five or six times a night. All right, come on, quit complaining. Let's go for a hike. Hiking alongside me today is a buddy of mine who really should have his own cooking show. He's an amazing cook. Um, he's hosted several shows. Uh, he was the host of The Man Show a while back. He hosted the Oscars twice. And of course he has his own late night talk show. That's right. I'm talking about Jimmy Kimmel. Let's go. We're but not you're... gonna make it through this whole hike. <laughs> it's not like this, <laughs> I mean, a whole hike. We're 40 seconds into this. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but you're in much better shape now than you used to be. Oh, you know, thank you. I wouldn't have been able to do this before. You somehow, I don't know if somebody talked to you or you came to like some kind of decision where it seemingly overnight, you became this svelte <laughs> kind of five o'clock shadow, stylish man. Yeah, well, the beard was easy. The losing weight part was no fun. I really get extreme with this sort of thing, so it wasn't a, what you might call a healthy diet, but I, I do try to be more reasonable now. So you, you cut down to how many bags of Fritos a day? <laughs> well, I don't measure them in bags. Man. I never thought I was fat though. I just- um, Oh, Jimmy. I didn't. <laughs> I know I was. <laughs> no, I didn't either. Are you a bathrobe kind of guy? You seem to at least be like a bathrobe guy at all. Not at all. No. Really? Not a bathrobe Man, guy. Man, I had no. you pegged wrong. No, I don't. Uh, I go to, right to the shorts. You just wear the shorts? Yep. I wear shorts almost all the time. Jimmy, I'm sorry. This is like the hottest day of the year so far and the steepest trail. And, and I did. I should have worn pants because I didn't realize there'd be so many brambles. What, what do you call them? Brambles. Oh, so you are a hiker. Oh, yeah. You know the terms. Yeah. You know I like to hike. Same May thing. I ask uh, just one favor from you? Yeah. If I am to die on this hike, I yeah. want you to post it. Oh, I'm going to post it either way. Okay, good. Thank yeah. You. I think you're never happier when you're cooking for people. Me personally? You personally. Yeah, that's true. I like to cook. For some reason, I don't know why it is. Do you tell me, why do you like to cook for people so much? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one of them is I like to eat, so I like to cook the stuff that I want to have. But there, I do get satisfaction from feeding people. It's some sort of just basic, I think, human need that's satisfied in me. And also, I don't make anything. My show is, when we do it, it airs and it's gone. It disappears. You know, yeah. I have nothing to show for it. And so when you have... The food doesn't disappear because nobody eats it. <laughs> right, of course. I get you. I Who's going to eat that garbage? But, <laughs> but when you have something that's, that you can touch, you can put it in your mouth, you can eat it, it, it feels good. And the other reason, there's one other reason is I'm not super extroverted in general. And it gives me, an, it makes me able to take little breaks from the, from the socializing, yeah. even in my own house. Yeah. But it's funny how a lot of talk show hosts are not extroverted. Yeah. You know? And yet they're very successful at doing what they do. It's talking to other people and being out there in the public. It's like you have an hour in the day that you're being, you're expected to speak to others and you're expected to be entertaining. And for whatever reason, it makes it easier. And it's harder too, but it's also easier because I'm not the kind of guy who would like just you know, get up in front of a, a crowd at the movie theater and start right, screwing around right. you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would enjoy it if somebody else did it but I would not be that guy but I guess that kind of takes away that feeling of being an outcast by having a talk show and talking to people yeah because I'm yeah. the only one in the room working yeah <laughs> so when you're cooking for somebody yeah is it that feeling of being like the old uh, Italian mother who loves watching her son eat Definitely. Food. I especially, more than anything, I like to cook for my kids, you know, I yeah. make breakfast most mornings and, um, you know, when your kids find something that you make that they love, it's, it's really a thrill and it you is, can never yeah. tell them that. And of course they never really compliment you. Sometimes they're like, how is it? You know, good, it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fact that they're reading it, I guess, is the compliment. Yeah. Yeah. My father would uh, I, I say, how is it, Dad? He goes, edible, it's edible. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother, who's a big, fat Italian lady, 
when you pull up to the house, you'd smell the garlic from the driveway, and I would become ravenously hungry immediately. I, would yeah. start, I, I couldn't wait to dinner. And she loved it so much because more really than anyone, I appreciated her food, you know? And so yeah. I'd walk into the house, I'd sit down, she'd fill a bowl with tomato sauce, which we called gravy, That's and she'd right. give me like half a loaf of bread. <laughs> and I just sit there and dip the bread in the sauce until <laughs> dinner was ready three hours later. What's your favorite cooking utensil in the kitchen? Uh, the wooden spoon in our family, it was, an, it was maybe the most significant object in our home because it was the spoon my grandmother used to stir the sauce and it was the spoon my Aunt Chippy would beat us with. <laughs> and many a wooden spoon was broken on our little bodies. And if you smell like gravy, that meant you've been beat. <laughs> That's right. If your ass smelled like gravy, you had been a bad boy. Uh -huh. All right, here's a question for you. <laughs> if you had this beautiful dinner served to you and you found a hair in it, uh -huh. Would you pull the hair out, throw it away, and eat the food? Or would you call the waiter over and say, hey, there's a hair in my food, so I'd like to have a new <clears throat> plate of food? I would probably disregard the hair. If it seemed like it might be one of mine, I would tell myself it was. Or if it might be my wife's, I would tell myself it was. I might, I probably wouldn't send the food back, but I would probably have to tell the waiter just for the experience of it, you know? Yes, maybe get a little off the uh, price. I'm not yeah. one of those guys that um, sends things back. Yeah, me neither. And I, I, I don't think that's a great quality necessarily. I think, you know, if something, if you say, you know, I wanted this salmon rare and it's w way overcooked, that you shouldn't have to sit there and eat the wooden piece of salmon because you did right. say it. Right, and you're paying for it too. Yeah, but I also don't like to be a pain in the ass. Me neither. I'm the kind of guy, if that happened to me, if I found a hair in my food, I just pull it out, put it aside, eat my food, and then use it as dental floss afterwards. <laughs> <Well done>. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and I, I know you agree with me, Howard Stern is a great interviewer. Yes. You know, he's yeah. probably know, the best. I mean, really. Probably the best yeah. and kind of unorthodox in a lot of way, too. You know, he does like a lot of rapid fire questions, sometimes doesn't let you answer one of them. And uh, finally, you answer one, and that's the one that. Well, he, he with. Howard, I think one of his secrets is he lulls you into what feels like a very intimate conversation, <laughs> and it is because you're in a room. There's no audience there, right. you know. Right. Even Robin is behind a glass wall, so yeah. you just start talking, and you know, there's sometimes I've walked out of that studio and I just thought, "What did I say?" <laughs> Do you ever go back to him and say, "Hey, would you mind not using?" Oh, it's live. Oh, it's live. It's live. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, there's. No no going back hey, but no he's there, very there. Uh, he's very charming and he's kind of like he's know, interested interested yeah genuinely yeah. interested yeah in your answers and you guys are pretty good buddies now right yes we are do you remember when you did this, the first time you did your show oh very well yeah and were you nervous very nervous. In fact, the only reason we were on the show is Baba Booey, Gary, Gary Delabate watched The Man Show and he vouched for us. And my publicist it told Gary, you know, Jimmy is a really, really big fan of the show. I mean, like genuinely a big fan of the show. And this is at a time where there weren't a ton of people who would admit they were big fans of the show. You know, yeah. this is during the, the, the raunchy years of that's the right, show. That's right, that's right. And, uh, and so we called in and I gave, you know, I really, I, I just kind of told Howard I loved him and, uh, and we hit it off pretty well, I think. And then Howard and Adam Carolla became friends. Did that uh, anger you? It, yes, it angered me because Adam couldn't, Adam didn't give a shit about Howard. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, what's going on here? This is not how it was supposed to go. Adam's like, yeah, I was in Howard's apartment. And then Howard actually hired Adam to like, be his, Adam was for a long time, he would, he, he would sit in the, what they call the Jackie chair, or the Artie chair or whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's right, man. And not that that was something that at that time I could have done, you know, but I was just like, Adam doesn't even care about this show. What's going on here? Did you say anything to him? Of course I said many things to him. I, didn't, I don't keep this kind of thing quiet. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. But since then, he's dropped Corolla. Yeah. And he realized that you are really the oh, quality guy. Oh, believe me, I put a stop to that.
<laughs> Do you still see Corolla much? Yeah, all the time. Because yeah. you guys were like brothers for a while until yeah. Stern came along. No, we still are. <laughs> I know. If you Kevin need just a pulmonologist, Cedar Sinai. <laughs> Kevin, you know this park was full of hookers. <laughs> Why did you hate me? I didn't expect that, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've hosted the Oscars twice now. Thank you. Did you enjoy hosting both times? Actually, I enjoyed them both. I didn't. Th I enjoyed them more than I thought I would. Yeah. I don't tend to enjoy anything that I'm required to do. Yeah. So I thought you did a great job on the. I think you had your hands full on the second one because there were so many, uh, you know, social issues out yeah, there yeah. that you had to kind of deal with and kind of, kind of tip. And you know how good I am with that kind of stuff. <laughs> you are good at it. You become really good at it. Yeah, it was funny because there were there seemed to be big groups saying don't say anything about this and another big group saying say something about this. Yeah. And it really like was unclear as to what I should do and I knew that I wouldn't know whether I did the right thing or not until it was over and everyone weighed in. Yeah. And I think that I, I think it, I think it, I had just the right amount of whatever I had to hit. I think so too, and I think it was a really tough year to host. But you wish, though, you do wish that the only requirement was that you be funny. You know, yeah. that's the I, ideal situation. And you're not no nerves at all coming out there. You look really relaxed. I wasn't that nervous. No, I, I really um, I don't know why I wasn't nervous. If I were to make a toast at somebody's wedding, I would be nervous. Yeah, me too. Smaller crowds that when you're not on a stage where people haven't come to watch you, yeah. scare me to death. And also just when you know you're totally prepared, it helps to calm you down. I mean, you do also have this like, well, I can only screw it up now. That's all that I can do. Yeah. But yeah. the only thing I worry about going on stage in a situation like that is fumbling the the jokes is you know, yeah 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 stepping on the words or just delivering them wrong you get dry mouth out there um not really we have water there's water back there. oh they're allowed you have water yeah there's all That's kinds so of water sweet. how's billy doing billy's doing great he's Good. uh he's almost one he's very cute he's very uh, active he's a little That's great, man. rough a little guy yeah man that was so scary yeah, it was very scary, but he's doing really well. I think people are have the idea that he's fragile in some way, and he's yeah, not. No. He's fat and strong. <laughs> you know, when you did that monologue talking about healthcare and stuff, not a lot, but sometimes you'll do that on your show. You know, and it's I think of them as just rebuttals. Rebuttals. Uh, you know, I yeah. think it's like the kind of thing that seemed to be a given uh, two years ago, and now they're not anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe we shouldn't poison the planet yeah, for yeah. profit. Yeah. For the profit of a few. Or gun laws, the NRA. Yeah. We get a lot of mail, a lot of horrible social media stuff. There are people who uh, wish uh, death upon my children, to my wife. It's really, people are the best. And then you go to the, one of these people, you know, go to their Facebook site, and it's like, Jesus first Christian I USA. <laughs> like, I, listen. From what I was taught about Jesus, I don't think he'd be sending messages of that type. I think it is sinful to wish death on someone's child. That is true. Oh, has that happened? Oh, it happens every day. Jeez, do you have security? We have security at the show, I yeah. You, right? <laughs> you didn't feel very threatened on this hike? I figured that we'd be safe on a hike in LA. I mean, the only worst comes, worst case scenario, somebody attacks us for not being gluten-free up here. <laughs> I got a death threat once when I was on SNL doing Weekend Update. So really? they sent me a letter. They said, I don't know how you became so unfunny, but your days are numbered. I'm gonna put a bullet in your big fat mick head. And for like the whole week after, I was so paranoid. I was asking everybody, do you think I have a big fat mick head? Do you think it's that fat? <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. I have had people insult me uh, but I plucked the compliment from the, like, you know, like, yeah. oh, Jimmy Kimmel is a funny guy, but he's a despicable human being. I'm like, well, oh, thanks for the funny part. I, you know, yeah. I do appreciate that. Yeah. A lot of people are talking recently about your Twitter world, Sean Hannity. Oh, yeah. You don't, you've never met him, have you? Well, we used to, you know, we went to camp together. Oh, yeah. But aside from that. <laughs> no, I haven't seen him since we were boys. <laughs> what do you think, how would it be if you ran into him in person? It would probably be um, vomitously cordial. <laughs> Isn't know? that crazy the way that works? Well, I think I think part of it is wrestling, you know, a lot of it. I mean, I can't believe that the things that they say on Fox News, they, they I mean, I can't ma imagine that they actually believe those things. So, I don't know, maybe I'm naive, but I tend to think that part of it is just, you know, acting. 
Yeah, yeah, it's just for the show. I mean, the hypocrisy is, like, it's overwhelming. Like, it's too, it's so much, you, ha you have to believe that they know it. Yeah. Right? You would think. I mean, yeah. it seems to be How such How someone who supports Roy Moore would compare me to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I mean, it's crazy. There seems to be such a distinct line between right and wrong, you know, with what we're seeing, you know, currently. And you would think people would realize that, you know. Or it's just like, you know, who is the person saying it? And do you identify with that group? If so, you're on board with everything they say. And I don't think it used to be like that. Well, this is nice. It was a nice little walk. We've never had a romantic walk together. We haven't. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I was worried when you said hiking, that I'd be bent over um, firing footballs between my legs. <laughs> you know, how you like me yeah. to do when we're yeah. hanging out. That's not do you think about your ancestors? Do you ever think about yes. maybe doing one of those DNA sites? Yes, I have. You I, have done it? I have, a, 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 I have an elaborate family tree on uh, Ancestry.com. Oh, you researched all that stuff? Yeah, and we even went, well, I even hired a guy in Italy to go to the church where my family was, you know, married and baptized and all that stuff and look up the records. And so I have like, Wow. Back to the 1700s, people's Anybody of records. notable uh, fame? Hitler was my uncle. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, Uncle Hitler. Yeah, I'm we called so him Uncle sorry. A. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it is I'm a funny head. thing. You want to make sure that you... We don't, I will tell you, this is kind of interesting. So we went on my grandmother's side. My grandmother's family is from a town near Naples. Yeah. And we went to visit the town. My parents and the whole family, we went. And we went to the town square. And there was a memorial for the the veterans of the war, you know, World War. Yeah. And some of our family's names are on there. And it occurred to me as I was looking at it, this in a sad way, I thought, oh, they were on the other side. They were on the, they were on the Nazi side. I know. And that's, you know, I didn't feel so bad anymore. Did you do this? I did. And? Uh, it turns out I come from a little town in Ireland called Fecal. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's spelled differently, but it smells the same. <laughs> like, I feel right now, Kevin, like you're my older brother and you won't let me hang out with you. I'm chasing you. You're going to play with the other kids. Come on, find your own like, friends. Up. Get your own friends, Jimmy. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. I didn't have the heart to tell him that I was Howard Stern's new best friend. Didn't want to hurt him like that. Thanks for joining my hike. Please subscribe and turn on notifications. And uh, we will catch you the next time. Happy trails. I'm exhausted. <laughs>